Good evening. Welcome to LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Join our church every Sunday, 9 a.m. Here's our fellowship schedule. Today is Wednesday, and uh, at 7 p.m., walk through the Bible virtual midweek live at Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to my journey of a lifetime. Your 52 weeks journey of a lifetime is to ensure everyone reads the entire Bible in a year for our flock. So this series is called Walk Through the Bible. We're done with the Old Testament from Genesis to Deut Deuteronomy. And uh, we're done with the 12 books of uh, history from Joshua to Esther. We're done with the third section of the Old Testament from Job to Song of Solomon. And we just started last Wednesday, the fourth section of Old Testament. It's about the prophets. So we have two major prophets, as you can see here, major prophets. There you go. And then here, minor prophets. So for the major prophets, we have Isaiah, which uh, we uh, discussed and uh, did the past, uh, fast cat last week. And uh, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. For uh, last week, we had Book of Isaiah, Lesson 18. And for tonight, we will be having Jeremiah, the Book of Jeremiah, and Lamentations. And this will be our uh, lesson number 19 out of 52. Wow. Let's start you know, with the book of Jeremiah. So we have two books for tonight, Jeremiah and Lamentations. The days are surely coming, Jeremiah, known as the whipping prophet. You know what? The book of Jeremiah is one of the most touching books you know, in the Old Testament. And yet, it is one of the most difficult to read because, it's, it, because it follows a theological order eh, rather than a chronological order. Jeremiah's messages go back and forth between various historical events during his ministry. Now, each uh, section of the book usually contains messages that deal with the same general theme but are from different time periods. Kumbaga, it would be difficult no, for us to outline the book. So ang gagawin natin tonight, we will just Look at some of its highlights. All right. Game ka na ba? Game na. Alam nyo, Jeremiah's ministry took place during the last 40 years of Judah. No? At uh, from the 13th year of King Josiah to the destruction of Jerusalem Nino ng mga Babylonians. And this period was characterized by nako, immorality, political corruption, and of course, ang famous na apostasy ng mga Israelites. You know what? After Nineveh, uh, the Assyrian capital, no, and nalaglag, kumbaga, nahulog na. Babylon became the world-dominating power. At the same time, the nation of Egypt uh, was rising to world power. The political leaders of Judah were torn between the Egyptians and the Babylonians. Some wanted an alliance with the Egyptians so they could resist the Babylonians. And some urged submission to the Babylonians to ensure the continued existence of Judah. Alam niyo, the prophets of this era urged the people of Judah not to look to Egypt or to Babylon for security. Mm -hmm. Alam nyo, ang sabi ng mga propeta, look to the Lord. Amen. Jeremiah's ministry began about five years after the revival recorded in 2 Kings 23. The revival was over. The final decline nako, was at full speed. No? So, sabi natin, si uh, Isaiah, now we talked about last week here, I'm pointing him out, ay nasa tribe or kingdom, sorry, hindi tribe, kingdom of Judah. Okay? Nasaan naman si Jeremiah? 
Ayun. So to which was Jeremiah a prophet? He was a prophet coming from Judah, not from Israel. So naalala niyo, pinag-usapan natin, na-divide yung kingdom. Here's from the creation, then to Moses and Joshua, then to the judges, and then the United Kingdom under Saul, David, Solomon, it in golden years, no? David and Solomon. And then after Solomon, yun, na-divide. No? Sampu dito sa Israel, then dalawa dito sa Judah. Dito nang galing si Jesus sa Judah. So, yan yung divided kingdom. So, yung prophet na sa Isaiah at sa si Jeremiah, galing sa Judah. Okay? So, Jeremiah, alam niyo ba, also wrote the Book of Lamentations. Kaya nga, uh, tutuhugin na natin siya ngayong gabi. Okay? Kasi, konti lang naman yung pag-uusapan natin sa Lamentations. Mas marami dito sa Jeremiah. So, Uh, he wrote Lamentations after the burning of his beloved city, Jerusalem. He was therefore a prophet before and during the exile. Mm-hmm. A valuable lesson should be learned from this book by all teachers. You know, kung preacher ka, kung Christian worker ka ng church, no? Nako, alami ka matututunan dito. Few men were ever more faithful and diligent in their life and ministry without Visible results than Jeremiah. Visible results in a Christian worker's ministry are not the gauge or acceptance by God. No? May kita nga natin yan eh, sa Jeremiah 1, to 9. Di ba? Ang tanong, when did the Lord choose Jeremiah to be prophet? Tingnan natin sa so verse 5. I choose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Kaya kung ikaw, kapatid, ay pastor, teacher, worker, lalong-lalo na sa mga workers ng mga church namin, mga servants, mga leaders, board, pastors, teachers, everybody, no, everyone who's serving in our church in LA Field Nas. Ay, nako, I encourage you. No? Una, shout out sa inyo. Thank you for... Helping me out for being a great support uh, under my leadership. Pero encourage ko kayo, kagaya ni Jeremiah, mga kapatid, e eh, pinili na kayo ng Panginoon mag-serve sa LA Field Nest before no, you were formed in the womb. Before you were born, no, in-appoint na kayo ng Panginoon. E eh, ano naman, no, ang reply ni Jeremiah sa panawagan ng Diyos, Sabi ni Jeremiah in verse 6, But I protested, Oh no, Lord God, look, I don't know how to speak since I'm only a youth. Oh. Kaya kung ikaw ay kabataan or bata pa sa pananampalataya, sabihin mo na natin na 65 years old ka na pero kabobornagin again mo lang last week. Eh, huwag kang matakot. Kasi tingnan mo, How did the Lord assure Jeremiah that he could speak for him? Tingnan mo sa, sa, ano, sa verses uh, 8 to 9. Sabi niya doon. Uh, do not say, oh, sa verse 7, 8 to 9. Do not say, I am, uh, the, then the Lord said to me, do, do not say, I am only a youth, for you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of anyone, for I will be with you to rescue you. This is the Lord's declaration. Then the Lord reached out His hand, touched my mouth, and told me, Wow, what a great encouragement, especially for those people you know, who are uh, serving God. Ako na-encourage ako dito. Ako parang feel ko rin i-preach to. Parang sarap. Anyway, Let's move on sa chapters chap, uh, sa chapters 2 no uh, chapters chapter 2 verses 4 to 37 mali yan chapter lang isang chapter lang anyway we see the shocking truth of Judas apostasy no sa chapter na to so verses 4 to 37 no in fact so verse 8 sab dun yung mga priests pastors and prophets are specifically mentioned as turning away from God Ooh. So verse 20 naman, no? no uses phrases such as upon every high hill and under every green tree which are references to the Baal 
worship in Canaan. Nako, eto na naman ang mga taga Judah. No, balik na naman tayo sa kanilang sakit ang apostasy. No, ibig sabihin ng apostasy yung mag-repent, tapos magsisisi, patawarin ng Diyos, and then mag-aayos ang buhay, tapos babalik, mag-repent, paikot-ikot, parang ganun. I mean, ito yung kasalahan nila. This was a, uh, a, per- a fertility cult. No? Yung binabanggit na sa references na yun. No? That practiced in uh, sacred groves and on hilltops. Because of the sexual acts involved in this idolatrous worship, the nation truly deserved the title Harlot. Yan. Kaya ang tawag sa nation na to ay Harlot. No, kasi eh, mapagtaksil sila sa Panginoon. Alam niyo, the Northern Kingdom, ito, 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 itong Israel, ayan, had fallen a century earlier, no? before Judah. Okay? Una silang nalaglag sa Assyrian captivity. No? But Judah had learned nothing about the results of turning from Jehovah God. Judah's people were guilty of the same sins their northern brethren had committed. And their guilt was worse because they had seen Israel's punishment. Mm. Diba? So, hindi natuto. Though, though, they were in the depths of uh, apostasy. Ano naman? No? What does God tells, uh, what does God tell Judah, I'm sorry, tell Jeremiah No, para sabihin sa mga tao, basahin natin, Jeremiah 4, 1 and 2. If you return, no, Israel, this is the Lord's declaration, you will return to me. If you remove your ab, abhirent, ab, abho, abhor, ab, mm, nabulul ako, <laughs> abhorent, abhorent idols from my presence and do not waver, then you can swear as the Lord lives in truth, justice, and righteousness. And then the nations will be blessed by Him and will boast in Him. Yun naman pala. Oh, eh kaso, di ba? Ano nangyari? Alam niyo, applicable dito sa buhay natin eh. Di ba? Gusto mo ng blessing, edi eh, blessing. Kung gusto mo ng curse, edi eh, curse. Pero, sabi dito ng Panginoon, kung babalik ka lamang, You will return to me. No? Tanggalin mo yung idols mo sa buhay. At uh, sabihin mo, as the Lord lives in truth, justice, and righteousness, no? sigurado, ibe-bless ka ng Panginoon. Amen? Alam niyo, God agreed to spare Jerusalem. No? If how many righteous men could be found there? Mm. Sabi niya, sige, i- Ya yeah, ano kayo, spare ko kayo pero basahin natin. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1. Roam through the streets of Jerusalem, investigate, search in her squares. If you find, if you find, if you find one person, one person, any who acts justly, who pursues faithfulness, then I will forgive her. Ooh. Ayan, ganun talaga, ganun ka merciful ang Panginoon, ganun ka forgiving, grabe. Lodi ko talaga si Lord, grabe. Whew. In Jeremiah chapter 7 verses 3 to 4 naman, he points out the people's false trust in the temple. They were still going to the temple to worship and offer sacrifices. But... There was no sign of righteous living during the rest of the week. Ayan. Ito yung magandang paalala sa atin, yung Monday to Saturday natin. Hindi naman tayo righteous living. Pero pag Sunday ay kababait natin. No, pagpunta natin ng church, talaga naman. Eh, magandang paalala to. Sabi dito, no? Jeremiah 7.3-4 This is what the Lord of Armies, the God of Israel says, Correct your ways and your actions and I will allow you to live in this place. Do not trust deceitful words. Chanting. This is the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. Ay, hindi naman. 
Eh kaso naman, doon ka lang naman tayo magaling sa Temple of the Lord. Eh hinahanap din ng Panginoon, consistent tayo Sunday to Sunday. Di ba po ba? Eh syempre, alam pa ba ang uh, the most famous na uh, chapters no sa Book of Jeremiah? Eh yung chapter 18 tsaka 19 kasi dito naka-record ang uh, Jeremiah's visit no to the potter's house. Notice in chapter 18 no ng Jeremiah watches the potter mold the clay. And in chapter 19 he takes the completed vessel and breaks it in breaks it in breaks it it in <laughs> nabubulok the valley of the son of Hinnom. As we look at this object lesson, no, we see a picture not only of Judah but also of ourselves at saka yung relasyon natin sa Panginoon. Okay? Tingnan muna natin siguro no, yung pattern. Mapatagpuan yan sa uh, 18, chapter 18 verses 1 to 4. Alam niyo, Israel was at the mercy of blind faith only if if she chose to be. God wanted to control every force around her for her own good. Diba? Kaya nga applicable dito yung Romans no, 8.28. Eh, no? well, I know the... And if, <laughs> Jeremiah 29.11 pala. Ano ba yung Romans 8.28? Uh, all things work together for good for those who love God and called according to His purpose and promises. Yan. Kasi siya ang ating divine potter. Alam mo the potter has a plan for his clay. Kagaya ng Diyos, may plano siya sa atin, sa buhay natin. He sees the finished product in his mind before it is completed. Likewise, the divine potter directs our lives. Opo. He uses circumstances, mga crisis natin sa buhay, parents natin, disasters, teachers natin to shape us. No? It takes time to make a special product nga eh. Pero maganda dito, ang good news. God never rushes. No, hindi siya nagmamadali. So, yan ang ating potter. Pag-usapan naman natin ang ating clay. Sabi dito, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. In Jeremiah's message, the clay represented naman Judah. However, this object lesson should also be applied to each of our lives. Siyempre, clay is of little value unless it is molded by the hands of a skilled potter. In yung ating Panginoon. The same is true of a human life. It is of little value unless molded by the hands of the divine potter. Just as clay must be tempered to be usable by the potter, we must be tempered by the trials, struggles natin sa buhay, experiences of life. No? So, we will yield to the hand of our potter. Yan. Yan ang clay. Pag-usapan natin yung potter's will. Anong purpose yan? The Lord wanted Judah to realize that just as the potter spun the wheel at his own speed and was in complete control, So, kagaya rin ng Panginoon, He was in control of the circumstances and things that surrounded Judah at sa buhay mo at sa buhay ko. Kaya sabi ko siya kapatid eh, He's in perfect control sa COVID-19 na ito. Kamaglalal, iligtas na tayo. God has a timetable by which He arranges the circumstances of life to mold each one of us. No? So, tingnan naman natin. Ito, sikat na sikat to. Sigurado, madami sa inyo. Life verse na ito. <laughs> no, Jeremiah 29.11 Doon mo rin ito matatagpuan. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you future and a hope. No, so ina-apply natin ito minsan sa buhay natin. Kaya madami to Life verse na maraming tao. Oh, pero ito ang context talaga. Ay, uh, patungkol to sa, ano sa Judah. Okay? And uh, pwede naman. Pwede naman talaga natin i-apply sa buhay natin. Yan naman talaga ang principle ng Panginoon. Okay? So, tingnan natin. Ano naman ang nakasulat sa Jeremiah 36.5? In chapter 36, we find out no, one of the most vivid, dramatic chapters in the Bible. Mm. Jeremiah had been banned from preaching in the temple. No? Therefore, the Lord told Jeremiah to write his message on a scroll and send Baruch no, to read it 
in the temple. Oh, so ano ba yung nakasabi doon? Jeremiah 36.5 Then Jeremiah commanded Baruch, I am restricted. I cannot enter the temple of the Lord. After Baruch had read God's message in the temple, he read it to the princess who in turn read it to the king himself. Ayun lang. Ano nang ano nangyari? No, sa 36.23, tingnan natin. No, as soon as Je, Je, as soon as Jehudi or Jehudai would read three or four columns Jeho, 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 ah, no, Jehoiakim Jehoiakim would cut the scroll with a scribe's knife and throw the columns into the fire in the hurt until the entire scroll was consumed by the fire in the earth in, in the hurt so in Sinunog. <laughs> Neither the king nor his princess no, showed any sign of repentance of their sins. Nako. Therefore, their doom was sealed. Ayan. Ayan nangyari. Ay. Sa, kung babasahin yung 39.1-8, no? eh, doon makikita nyo nangyari sa city of Jerusalem. Sa pamilya ng hari, at sa hari mismo. So, Jeremiah was the only man in Judah to have any say in his own future after Judah's fall. Alam nyo, in chapter 40 naman, uh, ayun, mabalik lang tayo. Sabi nga, no? uh, kasi hindi nakinig itong mga hari at saka itong mga prinsipe, eh, di, no repentance, no salvation. Parang nakikita mo yan sa divisory. Eh. No return, no exchange. No? Parang ganun. Ito naman, no repentance, no salvation. Okay. Alam niyo, sa chapter 40, si Gedaliah. No? Siya naman ang ginawang governor ng Judah. Kasi nga, na-capture na sila. The Jews who had fled from, uh, before the Babylonian army returned to Judah and gathered a good harvest after the hungry days of occupation. After only three months, Gedaliah was murdered. by <laughs> The people fearing reprisals from Babylon made ready to escape to Egypt. Ayaw. In chapters 42 to 43, Jeremiah urged you know, the Jews to stay in the land, but they refused and fled to Egypt, taking Jeremiah and Baruch with them. As God predicted, you know, in time, the arm of Nebuchadnezzar Okay, I'm sorry, naputol yata. <laughs> Nawala ata yung aking internet. Anyway, ulitin ko lang. Uh, as God predicted, no, in time the arm of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, reached to Egypt and brought the remnant back to Babylon. No, according siyempre dun sa isang historian, ang pangalan si Josephus. No, sikat to eh, Jewish historian. While in Egypt, yun lang, Jeremiah continued preaching to the people. But in spite of all that had happened, they still refused to listen. In fact, tradition tells us Jeremiah was stoned to death in Egypt. Kaya this book ends with an appendix retelling the terrible days immediately following the destruction of Jerusalem. It reminds people of the consequences for disobeying God. At syempre, sa ating pagtatapos, ang Book of Lamentations, alam nyo, itong book na to no, is a series of five distinct lamentations or funeral poems commemorating the destruction of Jerusalem. Kaya nga, weeping prophet ang tawag kay Jeremiah. Jeremiah saw this terrible event happen, including the destruction of the city, the demolishing of the temple, the killing of the people, and the remnant being taken into captivity. The book is a warning against sin and an illustration of what Moses said in the Numbers, no? so Numbers 32-23. Be sure your sins will find you out. Oh my goodness. So the famous verses no, sa Book of Lamentations, eto. Uh, 
chapter 3, verses 20 to 23. Familiar kay dito. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish. For His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. May kanta yan eh. Ano yan? da 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 Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Ayan. Last ko na yun. Hindi na kakanta. Baka pulan pa. Anyway, maraming maraming salamat sa pagsama niya sa akin. At uh, pinag-usapan natin ang Jeremiah at Lamentations. Next attraction, next Wednesday, pag-usapan natin ng book of Ezekiel. Manalangin tayo. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, you're so good. You're so merciful, Lord God. You're so forgiving. And thank you, Lord God, for we learn a lot from Jeremiah and the book of Lamentations. Oh, your faithfulness. It renews every morning. Your mercy. Oh, my goodness. You are so, so good. You're so great. You're so ah, worthy to be praised, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord God, if the, if the, if the, the nation of Judah refused to ask for forgiveness, to repent, Lord, I want to uh, usher people who are listening and watching to us to repentance, Lord God. Come pray with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I am a sinner, but I believe that you died upon the cross for me, that you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend. Come into my heart and set me free from my sin. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Allow me to bless you tonight. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow for Nourish My Soul Friday for our uh, Bible study life group Zoom. And uh, Saturday, Nourish My Soul. And Sunday, syempre, worship service 9 a.m. at Wiley Chapel in person or online. No? Para kung sa mong safe ka, you can watch us at home. Mas maganda, we recommend na you watch us sa inyong mga smart TV para mas malaki at mas malakas. At para mas makita niyo yung mga graphics and uh, PowerPoint and uh, yung mga mas madaling mabasa yung mga verses. Alright? See you. God bless you. Bye-bye.